Good morning. I was thinking that maybe we should have had wine since we were talking about uh, romance of publishing. But coffee is good too. So. Ever since we arrived in Jaipur, we're talking about wine only. Yeah, I hope you've all partied and then are surviving on coffee this morning like all of us. So, all right. yeah. um, so let me welcome you all to this session, Romance of Publishing. Uh, from becoming an author by chance to become an author by choice now, I happened to don a different hat last year that I turned a publisher. And there's a reason why I'm sitting, taking this center chair is because on my right is the, the lady who published me and on my left is the lady whom I published. Uh, and somewhere between I'm that Khichudi who is also an author as well as a publisher out there. I've always believed that Uh, and I was now juggling between two hats as an author and a publisher and I now could safely say that a book is an outcome of the marriage between an author and a publisher. Uh, that's, that's, that's their baby. Uh, so here we are and we are going to talk about romance of publishing and uh, the best part of playing two roles is that I can all, always take the position of an author and hurl acquisitions at my publishers. And when my author hurls, I can become, even I'm an author, you need to empathize with me out there. <laughs> um, but yeah, before that, let me just introduce uh, Vishali Mathur. She is an executive editor at Penguin Random House. Uh, for all my books that are out in the market, she is the lady behind them. And of course, they will be talking about it. And here's Chandra Roy Blacking, which is my publishing venture, Blacking's first author. Uh, we, Blacking published her book last year. The name of the book is A Good Girl. Uh, and she'll be talking about the book and, and her experience out there. Vishali is ideally supposed to moderate this event, but I can't hold myself back from the itch of asking questions and taking a different tour out there, which I will be bumping into. And so let me just start with the publisher, since the session is about romance of publishing. Why publishing, Vishali? How did it happen? And why publishing out of the entire gamut of things out there? I think it's a it's one of the strangest stories and I probably haven't shared this with you as well. Is it? Yeah. So the first thing was that I used to be a journalist. Um, I had this life where I was um, working for the cultural beat at uh, Indian Express and Times of India. And all my programs used to be held in the evening. So I used to be out all evening, then party in the night, come back home, file my story the next day. Uh, but when I had my kids, I was in a dilemma because I didn't know what to do. Uh, this kind of career, of course, can't continue. And I didn't want to do hardcore political reporting. So I was looking for a very slow, laid-back career. And um, so when I was um, doing my research, um, uh, I realized that in publishing, there are no emergencies. You go in the morning at 9.30, you come back at 5.30. And that was going to be my routine. And it is so laid-back that you might just end up coming home for lunch and then going back in again. And I thought it was just going to be this easy peasy thing which I did and a couple of books and who doesn't love reading, who doesn't love books, the smell of books, it'll be nice. And um, without realizing that I actually, when I, uh, when I approached Penguin and when I, when I actually started my job, I said I'm going to do this thing where you know you are a copy editor, you're sitting in one corner and just doing your business. And I ended up commissioning, I ended up commissioning a whole list of um, fiction titles, I ended up making a huge network and before I knew I was in this zone where I was constantly working even on Saturdays and Sundays and calling up authors and making things comfortable for, for them and signing contracts and negotiating contracts and hyperventilating on whether I was going to get this list, list straight at the end of the year or not. So, so yeah, so nothing, nothing's laid back about publishing anymore and, and what's wonderful is that that has been happening. Uh, I mean that pace has been just growing yeah. and the competition grows and so you have to take yourself to the next level and and I feel you know in this one year I have grown so much and uh, nothing laid back about it but I'm happy to be ready for the challenges and be sitting here at least and talking about it so that's my story yeah you never told me that you thought it would be a laid back life and 
when you approached me for uh, the second novel, Can Love Happen Twice, that's yeah. when. So Vishali is the first person I met at a big, uh, a big publishing house, and I still recall the first coffee that we had out there and how the conversations took place uh, at that point in time. Uh, Chandra, uh, why you thought of getting published? You are living a peaceful, subtle life in Sharjah. You're a homemaker, clicking pictures of birds and parrots, no, no, no. which you were doing right away. <laughs> writing, uh, writing for Khalid Times and then Gulf uh, on on gardening columns. So, what? When exactly it struck you that I need to write a book? No, no, I never had a laid-back life uh, to correct you. Um, I was already working as a lecturer at a college, uh, right. an American college in Sharjah and also freelance, freelancing for two of the largest selling newspapers in the Gulf, Gulf News and Khalish Times. Uh, so writing article is not a laid back job at all because you have deadlines, you're dealing with serious deadlines there right. and also uh, and you're writing under so many constraints because in, in the Gulf you have to, you know, uh, be very careful of using uh, words like even sex. Once I wrote a cover story on date palm and I had on date palm. Talk, talked about the sex of the tree and my editor told me, Chandana, you are going to get me into trouble. So you have to be very careful about those things. Um, but um, you know, for me, like I was uh, very active raising a son too at the same time, uh, dealing with marriage, inviting people. Um, so all those things, but uh, I was much younger those days and I could deal with all the pressures. And uh, as for getting published, uh, I have been getting published ever since I was in 6th standard. So, um, you know, seeing my na name in print has been thrilling for a while. But after a while, you know, it becomes a job, especially writing articles because you are dealing with deadlines and um, you are given a certain format and you have to write within that. So, it's not a creative thing. And uh, I always wanted to write a book because ever since I was a child, I used to, like people read stories, I used to make up my own stories and go to sleep with those stories. Mm -hmm. And I've always thought of writing a book, but never had time for it because I was a science student. I became a science student and uh, there was no time. And uh, finally, when I started getting published, there were so many deadlines to de deal with and every week I would be published. And um, it was more of a job for me. Uh, then, so, uh, what was what was more special to see your name in, in print or to see your name on the cover of a book? Uh, no, th those were not the attractions for me. For me, it was a freedom to write what I want to write, basically, mm -hmm. uh, because uh, writing article is different. You are catering to your editor, your readers, and so many other people and uh, dealing with deadlines and also with word limit. That was the most constraining part and I just hated it. Mm. So for me, I, want to be, wanted the, I wanted to feel liberated, you know, just free to write what I want to write. And one fine morning I decided I've had enough of it. My son left for college, so I had free time. And um, also my husband, uh, I mean, I had that freedom. I didn't have to earn a living. So I didn't have to work at, at the college anymore. So I left my job too. I left the freelance writing too and decided that I want to write a novel. And uh, one interesting thing I would say, uh, I saw an article on JLF and all these authors were there, uh, Vikram Seth, Kushwan Singh, a whole lot of those you know, in a group and I saw those pictures and that was very inspiring. I said, wow, I can meet Vikram Seth like that because I, I'm a big fan of Vikram Seth. And which year was this? This was maybe eight, eight nine years ago. Okay. Yeah, because that was the time when I first read his book, A Suitable yeah. Boy. I remember the high I felt when I first met Amitav Ghosh. This was yeah. just a month into my new job. And when I met him and got the photograph signed, oh my God, I wanted to give a personal copy of the photograph to everybody I knew. <laughs> so that was really Which is true. Um, at times when I walk in, uh, into the publishing house, Penguin Random House, and I'm amazed to see people, publishers, who wine and dine with these authors. Back then, I was a debut author. Are so excited, the aura of an author of an author walking in publishing house, and I have seen on Vishali's face. We were we were talking about our campaign of taking a book live, and suddenly, one of the two people that we were sitting we said, 
look out Vikram said and I was like even I'm an author <laughs> why do you react in this way in this way to Vikram but yeah so that's that's a different charm out there I've, I've heard about Vikram said from uh, you as well Vishali why don't you take 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 things from here uh, on the on the, on the session okay okay so we women are multitasking yeah. and fulfilling our dreams and we'll being out there that. what about you you tell us about how you started your publishing journey i think little bit like yes. uh, people know about it no no I, yeah. I, I must tell uh, my journey in this world of writing was by chance people who have read my debut novel i to a love story would know how i arrived i did not read a single book before i wrote one uh, so that's where I come from—a very different, different planet in this world. Turns out that book is continuing to find its readers, and many a times when people happen to read my tragic love story, there was this urge in them to narrate me their own love story. And it's just a thing that the grief, when you when you when you share it, it reduces, it gets divided. That's, that's when I realized that so many of them have stories to narrate. I wasn't the single one out and somewhere I landed up opening this flood of them telling their love stories. So 2012 I was pursuing my MBA uh, in Hyderabad and that's when people started writing me, sending me their stories and I, that's when I thought maybe I should publish them. Instead I, I told them that I can recommend you a couple of publishers, why don't you go ahead and then get published. I can at least give you some context. Majority of them came back and told me we have been rejected, no one is answering our calls and that's when I could see another author in the making. Uh, when I was rejected by almost every publishing house that I knew about, I used to roam on the roads of Darya Ganj trying my luck to get self-published. I used to reach out to the booksellers on the footpath and talk to the printers in Darya Ganj that what exactly can be established because I had this urge to tell my story to people. I could see myself in those people who would write to me that even I want to become an author. That's when we did something very interesting and, and of course it happened with uh, my publisher's support. We did an anthology. It was a crowdsourced collection of short stories that I said, okay, I'll publish and this is my way of opening the gates to a good number of people in one go. So we did a national level program the name of the book is Love Stories That Touched My Heart and in this title my means it's me and I'm inviting people to send me their stories. The whole idea was to publish some 25 stories but we landed up getting submissions that were above 4,500. Now imagine 25 stories out of 4,500 just take the percentage count of how many will make it and that day I realized the whole urge in, in, in the current generation to go out and tell their story. This was my pilot process and I wanted to jump onto something big in which I actually set up a venture of my own, set up a platform on which I publish and the whole idea was A, I'm not going to do a vanity publishing, the authors are supposed to earn royalty, B, authors need not pay a single penny to get published out there. It was going to be that plain simple thing. And I also wanted to work with three authors in one season. So I launched this program called Three Interesting Storytellers. And the whole idea was that bring any genre, any refreshing writing style. There is no limit. There is no box as such. And that's how Blacking happened. Uh, 2013, 2012, I was very excited. I, I, I remember giving calls to my family that I graduated from uh, a B school and I got my job as a senior program manager at Microsoft. Uh, eight months later, I was happier quitting my job, coming all the way from Hyderabad to Gurgaon, setting up a publishing house, which is actually in my drawing room. Uh, I, I do not pay any rent. But the whole idea is that there is content available. There are people willing to write and all they need is a platform. So. It all goes back to that one movie that I watched, Spider-Man, in which in the end, Spider-Man says, with great powers comes great responsibilities. So I think that somewhere is still continuing in mind. So that's my little journey of... I said, I, I asked him not to. I asked him, <laughs> I, I was like, please do not stop working. And, uh, but, but you know, somewhere I, you know, here in comes the romance of publishing, actually, yeah. that, that a book actually is that obsessive you get obsessive about a book you get obsessive about the characters and you obsessive you're obsessive about getting it published and the whole process of 
or bringing that book out i know that you know in in publishing um terms we always say that it's like giving birth to a child and it is that grueling and it's funny how book after book year after year you are putting in that kind of hard work you're putting in the hard work for the covers you're putting in the hard work for the editing for the mm -hmm. marketing and just ensuring that the content is right right yeah so do you think you get that obsessive because i get pretty oh, I obsessive got, I, with I, you I guys got, i got pretty obsessive yeah as a fact as a matter of fact even in meetings uh, in my it uh, career i was actually thinking about books all the time so here is ravinder singh who is supposed to write program and handle projects and there is a, there's a team um, but all that's going in my mind is that probably we should twist the color of the cover page or i i have one more person whom i want to mention in the acknowledgement sections let me call my editor right away how do you take that out of you and i at one point in time i felt i'm not doing justice to this job and the obsession was so high that i had to pay money back to microsoft because i was going to break their bond and microsoft said if you only if only you stay for another 2 months you'll you'll finish up one year and you will be you don't need to pay any money back to us and i said this is the calling it's not about money end of the day when i want to go i want to go and i'm glad that i took that decision back then took the leap of faith and here i am enjoying writing books publishing books a lot more than writing program codes which i used to write Uh, so and that's the challenge. That's okay. how we have like a job to do, and he doesn't, and he can do whatever he feels like doing. Yeah, my he life is still laid back. Like, yeah, <laughs> he tells me and his wife all the time. You guys, you know, you're working too hard. Don't do that. <laughs> But I think all of us are obsessed. And then, what do you feel about it? About your book? Yeah, it, uh, for me also. Uh, you know, when it comes to obsession, yes, uh, I agree with him. When, whenever I, uh, while I was writing the book. you know i would i would be with my characters all the time even i would be at a party and still thinking about a plot you know okay i i can use this one as you know in fact one of the chapters was written after attending one high tea with some of the ladies who are you know uh, <laughs> really I so i haven't read the book no, no <laughs> i haven't mentioned it to them so uh, yes uh, publishing is all about obsession it's all also you go through the same um, uh, rejection once i've been rejected of course so you go through the same frustration same lows same highs you know same uh, uh, everything elation so the romance of publishing is exactly i mean it's it's as bad once a publisher rejects you it's as bad as being rejected by your romantic interest yes so yes. i do rejections all the time as heartbreaking as yes, it is yes yeah. and i do rejections mm. all the time mm. so i i take care not to send a rejection on a friday so that a person does not spend <laughs> monday anyhow is weekend. starts blue <laughs> <laughs> monday is anyways blue so it's fine mm -hmm. so i know i know it can come very personally and, yeah, and it, i don't know why it, it uh, feels horrible to reject but tell me uh, when you so i'm i'm talking about a debut author's perspective who has just finished writing the book or probably somewhere in the mid of it what was your expectation back then before you knocked the doors of publishers has it changed today so expectations versus experience and when you look back today at those rejections were they all wrong were they some some of them were meaningfully right so what is your experience no, of no the rejections were very educating okay and they were very meaningful and i would say i'm a better writer write, writer today because of the rejections and uh, even with ravinder of course uh, when he approached me he says chandana your uh, novel is too long and uh, 435 pages is just too long and you have to reduce it to 250 pages i said no way i cannot do that uh, then we came to a compromise and now it is 307 pages but uh, i i now realize that by reducing the word you know it's uh, when you edit it yourself it's one of the most heartbreaking things because these are some of your best lines but they are coming in the way of narration so you have to be very very objective about it those maybe those lines you can use maybe somewhere else but not in this novel because it is uh, it's not you're not telling the story properly so i think uh, it was very objective uh, criticism uh, one particular uh, french agent in fact first i was approaching all the new york agent london agent and they all got back to me and they all had good things to say and even the re rejection was extremely uh, polite and uh, very analytical 
uh, one of the agents, he told me that Chandana, you are talking about Elora scandal and uh, you are uh, almost like, you know, it is like a Chekhov's play. You know, you are talking about the decor and the talking about the all the, uh, you know, the generation things and family intricacies and the gossips and gossiping aunts and all. Where is the story? And you have to bring the scandal forward and carry it and, and everything else has to be in flashback. So, I worked on his suggestion, but he's, he wanted me to restructure entire thing and I was not ready for it. Because uh, he as a French agent, he did not know uh, the intricacies of family life in India. He did not realize that how much uh, thing, I mean those things people, I, I was very sure that uh, youth in India as well as many women of my age group also would identify with that. That much, uh, you All know, right. I had faith in my book. So, but I did change few things and uh, Ravinder of course, he was extremely polite and being an author, he saw my book from an author's point of view. He made me realize that this has few things have to go. Uh, he wanted one chapter to be completely deleted, but I shortened it because it was, I am a bi biology lecturer. So, in that I had talked about love from a biological point of view and there were a lot of hormones and love chemicals and all that. And he said, Chandra, this, I was like, you know, I was reading on it, that what's this, you know. <laughs> so, uh, I told him that, look, I am not going to remove the chapter, but I am definitely going to shorten it and I made it more reader friendly. And also another chapter where the girl falls in love with a married man and again he had objection, but I stood my ground and uh, we came to an understanding. So, he helped me to improve and especially the ending part also. And uh, I think my novel improved a lot because of all the criticism and if I be, whenever I am ready to write the next book, uh, I have a lot of experience because of all the rejections I had. And hmm. I am glad that you said. Um, talking of rejections, how does it feel uh, Vishali as a publisher to reject a manuscript, to reject an author who turns out to be a best selling novelist in future from a different publishing house now? Yeah. Does it hurt at one point in time or you want to go back in past and undo or do you go and take another look at what exactly he submitted and what mood were you in or probably has it ever happened that you rejected someone but the book turns out to be was published by a different publisher and it's doing really well now. Yeah. No, having said that, I think um, it's never happened to me. Uh, I have never rejected something and it has gone on to become big. Hmm. Um, fortunately, it's a scary thing <laughs> for a publisher. Uh, but the good thing is that when I do my rejections, I'm honor and sincere about it. Um, I am honest and sincere about it because what I do is that sometimes I feel that a, a particular book can do well, but it might not do so well in Penguin. So, you are aware of the True. environment True. that you are working in mm -hmm. and sometimes you feel, you know, if a small publisher just takes on this book and works hard with this book, they can probably make it a better proposition for the author rather than us picking it up because I am imagining it in my framework of things and, and how it won't fit in there. So, um, when I am sending out a rejection, it's not just, hey, I don't like your book, but it's more like it, it doesn't work for my list um, and which means that um, there will be things that will be coming into play. We will be investing a lot of time and energy into doing this book and putting this out and there's a whole machinery working there. So, is it worthwhile for the book as well? Is the book going to get lost in the number of books that we have right now? Is the author going to be able to uh, actually, you know, in a way make up to the expectations that the publisher would have from him and is he that committed for the book or, if, or, or sometimes people, you know, just want to get it published and sometimes they come back to me and can you make us a suggestion, can you tell us why you said no to it and at that point of time when I say that, you know, I feel that it, it needs more work and the author comes back and says, yes, I know, I've done a second draft, can I send that to you? And that's when I lose faith mm. because, you know, you sent out something which you are not confident about 
and and then you will go and say oh publisher rejected me but you were not confident in the first place so i think that the the writing and the pro proposal that an author sends has to be the best you can make at that point of time and you right. should it's not like vim excel or surf excel that is better and brighter now it has to be good in the first place and i think that the first chapter or the first page i would say honestly regardless of the writing mm -hmm. is very very important there are there are books that i have seen where i have literally ticked the boxes on how the story progresses and i've said oh the writing is not good but this person is a writer because he knows where where the ups and downs and lows and the elements of the book should be so maybe he or she has not been able to put it in the right grammatical uh, sentence but the structure is perfect so this person is a writer and i'm happy to take it on okay. sometimes i've rejected people because i know that if i take it on i will be rewriting the book i'll mm -hmm. be writing too much so an editor also has to know when to stop Right. Stop right. editing the book. You should right. not be putting your voice into the book, and you should be able to hold the voice of the author. That's when you stop. You say, "Okay, I'm sorry. I won't take this up because if I do, then what I think that this book should become would be more like my voice in it." So, so that's that's how, where it comes from. Sure. And uh, I think one yeah. of the, I think the only depressing fact about one of the two depressing facts about uh, publishing from my side would be to say no. So if I'm picking up three manuscripts in the end, I'm probably going to say no to some 500 people. Yeah. How do you deal with this situation? Aren't you? So some in my, in my mind, I think that there are people who love reading my books, and when then they submit stories to me, willing to be authors, I they get something negative from me. Even that no, even no matter how polite I am, what they remember is he rejected my book out there. How yeah. do you deal with this? And the no's are in abundance. The yes are in like. handful of people out there how do you deal with yeah do you hate saying no do you hate your job at that point in time or that aspect of it i don't know i just i have in in the past a lot of people um, have told me that oh you rejected me and i'm i've got published and they send me their websites and things like that when i send a rejection i always say okay listen here this book might just become like the biggest thing ever out there but then i am prepared for that because right now i've made the right choice mm -hmm. so in a in a you know in a way i just try to be very sincere with what i do and the rest of it i don't know i think it comes with the territory so and people get heartbroken they get rejected and sometimes they are quite so angry that when they get published by some publisher they will send me an email and and they'll send me the website where they've got published true and i say good job because you know your job is to get published my job is to see what i can publish so that's fine that's fine it's totally okay yeah and one of the the most difficult aspect here is to sit and go through the stories out there um much before i thought of becoming publisher i thought that i will get fair amount of entries but to get that right content the whole process of going through literally junk and trash at one point in time uh it's quite difficult even is irrespective of the fact that we post it on our websites that these are the criteria this is what you have to submit a probably a synopsis and sample chapters i'm amazed to see how many people actually land up sending their author bio first and then they want to establish themselves i come from this industry this is my experience out there a lot many times they forgot to even submit the sample chapters because they got in length talking about their career in marketing or their plans on how they feel they are going to sell these books so they have this whole charter of i can ensure that we will be able to sell these many copies and my response back to them was you missed to attach sample chapters sir so i have come through those scenarios as yeah. people are so self obsessed i think at one point in time when i when i started writing my book i also believed everyone believes in at least his or her story uh, the moment you are going to submit it to a publisher you so believe in it that come what may this has to make it to a book so we are no i don't think so i like think that? so no sometimes they send a rejection letter and say i'm sorry this doesn't fit my list and then somebody says okay what's your list let me write <laughs> according to your list so i don't think you're believing in your book when you're doing that and one of the things about uh, the proposal is that sometimes 
you know, people send their proposal and they refer to themselves in the third person. Uh, this one did that and it, that is kind of a bit off-putting, I find. Same sort of self-obsession sort of and looking at yourself in third person and saying, this one has done that and all that. Just a sincere little note uh, would suffice and pay attention to what your writing is and believe in that. And never ever say that, okay, I'll write according to what you want me to. And then people sometimes offer you money and say that, what would it take for you to publish it? Sure. I said, I'm sorry, I'll lose faith in my job if I take money from you to publish a book. So, so I think I have personally learned to separate to these little answer. things. I'm sorry, every job has got time. its own challenge out there. Yeah. Uh, this is one of it. One last question to Chandra and then we'll open it for Q&A. Uh, when you were facing rejections, did you ever think of self-publishing at one point in time? And, and, and part B of this question is, were you ever scared to submit the content? A lot many times the debut author has a feeling that, oh my God, what will happen to my content if I submit it? Someone could reuse it, there could be a copyright issue, someone can claim it, it could be a publisher. End of the day, there is an editor who is a human being who could be moved either way. How do you, were you scared at one point in time to submit the content? And self-publishing uh, okay. was an option. Let me uh, answer the second part of the questions, question first. Uh, no, I was not, because I was always approaching, I did my research properly. And this is a, anybody, uh, an as aspiring author, I would say you have to do your research. You have to submit it to the right people. You have to make sure that they, they are not, you know, because there are, there are many people there out there who can take advantage of your, uh, your gullibility because you are so eager to get published. So I did my homework and I, I approached only um, very well established uh, agents as well as publishers. So I was not at all scared as far as uh, you know your manuscript being um, and then uh, you were the one who approached me and uh, for me it was like when you spoke to me we didn't even sign a contract you know we signed the contract <laughs> <laughs> after the book was released. So yeah. <laughs> uh, I had, uh, I mean, he somehow had made me have that kind of faith in him uh, while we, in, while talking. So uh, that was it. So I never had that fear. Um, and as for uh, uh, self the yeah self uh, publishing, for me, uh, I'm 50 plus, and uh, it was never an option. It was never an option because self publishing requires a lot of pr promotion. And I don't have the either the time or the stamina or the inclination for it. But what has so, 50 plus to do with self-publishing? <laughs> because you require self-publishing is it's uh, see oh, uh, you, when you get published by an established publishing house, they yeah. do a lot for you in terms of promotion, mm. in terms of you know because you're already recognized. You know my book carries your name, so um, I mean I already had a readership because of uh, being published by Ravinder Singh. Similarly, Penguin, I mean, those names carry weight. But if I self-publish, I mean, okay, I'm known uh, in, in the Gulf region as an author, as a, as a writer, but uh, otherwise, who knows Chandana Roy? So okay. I'll have to do like, uh, I mean, many of these uh, new authors have done and they have made a history of a sort by uh, doing the promotion work, but I'm not as young as them. And I, I can't, I live in, uh, I lived abroad, I still live abroad. And for me to come down to India and do the promotion, it's a, uh, it's uh, I mean, the, the logistics simply don't work. Right. So for me, it was never an option. Fair enough. Yeah, and I, I, I also had the faith because it was my book was never rejected outright. Okay. Uh, everybody who rejected said it has substance, it has uh, potential, and it needs to be restructured. True. So I had faith in my book. Fair enough. Hmm. All right. With that, hmm. we can open it for Q and A. I played the role of moderator. <laughs> oh, <I'm> so sorry. <laughs> It's okay, on the privilege. Yes. Hi, this is an editor question. If you are already working with a writer who submits a manuscript, a new manuscript uh, that is good, but you don't quite see the commercial, uh, that it's not a very commercial title, but it's good, and perhaps it's a book that the writer needs to write yeah. at that time. Yeah. How do you how do you deal with that? How do you talk about it? Uh, do you accept it, or do you? Yeah, would be interesting to hear what. Yeah, so um, it happened with me that um, there was a particular author who was writing in um, a different genre. She was writing thrillers, and uh, I asked her to actually write a romance, um, and then she got back to me with a thriller. 
so uh, and I I somehow felt that her thriller writing wasn't quite there her romance had done well but then again I did not want to take the thriller so so I just called her up and we had a chat and I told her I said I'm sorry um, I don't believe in this so when I um, actually speak to authors who who've published with us before and if their second manuscript doesn't work for us then I actually um, talk it out with them I have a discussion and um, I don't know for some reason I've not had a problem there I've not had a problem people have been very accepting it's fine with them and I think it has a lot to do with the kind of options that are available to the authors these days so um, a lot of authors are also publishing with multiple publishers so sometimes when you don't accept something a particular they, they do end up getting published through other publishers so it's not been a problem so far yes the mic oh. there's another mic coming for you look at your right yeah, it's okay okay uh, what exactly is the i mean what are the kind of variants in the process by which you consider books good questions to me yeah um i put two two variants on my website also uh, first the storytelling style it is more important to me than the story itself that is my number one priority and of course the second is the story itself i'm more keen to see new genres coming out new style of writing coming out I, I do not agree with that there are only set genres you can write in or the styles that you can write in uh, the editor is going to fix the grammar part of it but what are the new ways in which you can tell me the same subject I was I was at a festival and I was speaking uh, that lot many authors were coming up and if I have to if they have to narrate a story that probably a sentence that I was in the jungle and I happened to see a tiger. Now, one author who, who came and, and told me, I was in the jungle and I happened to see the tiger. I would love that. That's the writing style. The story remains the same for me. I'll give emphasis to this particular person out there. Vaishali, you? Yeah. You, you want me to answer that yes, question? Please. Well, I, again, I have two parameters. Um, my first thing is the story. You have to write a bloody good story. Uh, because a story carries you have your content there with you second thing I look for is the X factor again I think we are probably on the same page on that you're looking for this X factor in a particular story uh, which is coming out of the originality of the author so those are the two things basically it's more instinct when you're reading fiction non-fiction um, non-fiction would depend on the subject uh, the scope of the proposal and and what is there already out in the market and how does it work and all those things even in the case of fiction it's important to place the book and um, I think I can vouch for the fact that when I get a proposal that I'm really excited about and uh, the the image of the book and the cover starts to form in my mind uh, almost as I finish the book Great. so I will give it two days after I've read the book to actually imagine the book and then approach the author and say hey I'd like to publish you so, yeah. Someone in the back and someone here in the and fourth row. Lady, yes. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, you were considering self publishing, right? Sorry? You were considering self publishing? Oh, yes. And, uh, that was after you, uh, your work has been rejected? Or? Yes, that was after my work was rejected from every publishing house that I knew about. And then I realized that there are some that I didn't even know about. So, that happened as a plan D because plan A, B, C had failed by then. But the fact is that I was determined that. There would be some plan. Kuch na kuch to main ke leke yeah. Can I can I step in for a bit? Uh, one of the things that I have seen with all my top authors, and that includes you, Dr. Joy and Ravinder, is um, that I notice two things. They work really, really hard. You know, people um, are always doubting, and I see that they worked hard to be where they are. No credit to the publisher. Um, and the second thing is that they connect. They know exactly who, the, who their readership is, who their audience is, and what do they have to say. So one of the things in commercial is it has to, it has to work because it works for the reader. And that's, that's really one of the bigger points here. And, and how hard they work, you have to just see to believe it. They're constantly out there, 
and um, I know saying that signing number of copies is glamorous but believe me when the, the kind of crowd that they get and the kind of signings they have to do it goes on for two or three hours in, in places some places we actually have to switch off the lights to let the people go so so they put in a lot of and it doesn't come because you went and you got your book published it came because you actually cared and believed in your book and you wanted to to have to actually believe that the reader wants to read this and to give it to each of the readers so that kind of commitment that you put into your book is very very important thank you so, so much for your kind words <laughs> i just have a second question so what did you learn about the self publishing when you were inquiring with the street booksellers and all and then how did you end up uh, getting published sir? well um, interesting i'm glad that you asked this question so i was almost in the middle of it when someone told me have you reached out to a particular publishing house and why i didn't know about that particular house is because they didn't have a website of their own i believe they still do not have their website of their own uh, as on date so it was through a word of mouth and reference and uh, they were doing a lot of love stories and mine was here a love story coming all the way and the usp of mine was that it's a true story it's a tragic ending it's from the first line of this chapter to the last the way it ends out there and they were keen to do that for them that was a different selling point uh, a, a new kind of love story which has a sad ending which was quite not the case with other books out there and that it happened so someone wrote me on a piece of paper their gmail id and i happened to write to them and then it worked out so i almost told my plan d and plan c again came back into the limelight i said let's go it out there at least i'll save some money of producing the book and let but then everything that was done from day one on marketing was was done by me and similar the case with so dojo also got published from the same house and he did the similar uh, stuff to to take his books out there uh, the the i i recall there were a lot many issues back then uh, with, with with the tiny little publishing house who hasn't established themselves of course even today i'm thankful to uh, swishti who published uh, my book back then but there were so many so many uh, issues that the book is not available there is a clash with so much happens behind the door uh, on the other side distributors who's paying money to whom the retailers the book has its own journey to reach the retail store and i was taken back when i could not see my own books in bookshops end of the day i used to call I, the whole charm of being a debut novelist and seeing your books in a, in a book stall or someone taking a picture and giving it to you it's a different charm nothing beats even today nothing beats the charm of not even the royalties trust me not the commercial aspect but the charm of being at a airport or traveling in a delhi metro and to see an unknown person reading your book yeah that moment nothing beats that moment for anybody out yeah. there yeah so that thing keeps pushing people out there yeah that's true yes lady uh, and i'm not you need to tell me guys when to stop yes. <laughs> hi my question is for miss mathur yes um how much of uh, a finished manuscript are you looking at i mean uh, <laughs> what kind of role as an editor do you play in shaping a manuscript and also uh, would you be looking more at like the content of the quality of the writing or you know maybe it couldn't have a structured form but the quality of the writing is good can i can i just talk about a really funny story so uh, a couple of years back when i just started publishing whenever a new author came to meet an editor they would send the rookie to go and meet the person so i ended up i was the one who was sent and and say hey go meet this lady and she's come from our contacts and all so you have to you know be nice to her I, it's not that i'm going to be a bad person but i sat there and she looked at me and she said here i have this bloody good idea for a book seriously you're going to love it okay and then she narrated the whole story to me which was a bit bizarre i must say but and then she had written three chapters and she showed those to me on the laptop and i was like okay can you send email it to me and let me evaluate it and she said no this is too good an idea to just share over an email <laughs> i cannot do that and then i said okay then i tried to convince her to send those three chapters because i knew that you know at the end of the day i would have to evaluate this and then she said something like so who's going to write the book for me and i was like okay and she said you know this is a good idea i started you on do you have people who are going to finish the story for me so no we don't finish the story 
uh, we do not shape the story we do not structure the story i do not absolutely interfere with the organic process of writing even now i know that you know like kudoja sends me a couple of chapters i don't make the comment on the whole story at all like i will not stop them from writing i do not stop an author you have to create the whole story by yourself and then we can go ahead and make the changes and then we can make the editorial changes and i am i i can write and like you said sometimes the language is not good enough but if i believe in the story i take it on and then i edit it but then i stop myself if if i am becoming more prominent in the story than the writer so you have to find that balance it, it's a fine balance that's there so you don't have to overwrite for the author you don't have to become the author you're the editor so you have to maintain your boundaries with the manuscript you cannot uh, push around the author too much and say hey you know unless you actually believe in what you are doing uh, i don't believe in over editing a book so have i answered your question the mic should be there's one more somebody else is, yes that is this lady yeah yeah hi uh, in our country with yes, so many yes. potential writers thousands and thousands of them and so few good publishers uh, isn't do you think it's highly possible that there'll be a lot of good writing out there which yes, probably will absolutely. just don't make it just because of the fact that they don't look get looked at it seriously mm -hmm. for example i mean somebody like Pen penguin random house who probably receives uh, thousands of uh, uh, stories every year uh, wouldn't there be some good writing which probably doesn't make the mark at, at all and the author gets uh, a bit frustrated and stops writing altogether and what do you think i mean no, somebody like you has really taken the effort to start a publishing company and help out such people but is there some way that this can be you know looked at and you know is there some way that good writers who don't get really looked into because of the volumes can you know be helped am i audible yeah, yeah no. i'm glad that you asked this question uh us in this country there's always a demand and supply issue going on in every aspect and starts with all and we if we try to bubble it down we'll land up population being that first criteria that leads to we are doing odd even in delhi why because of the population there's a demand and supply criteria everywhere of course there are so many wannabe writers and there is definitely a chance that so many of them will actually miss the bus out there but probably what needs to be taken into consideration is how big is our readership the demand out there as long as there is demand and of course you are right when you say there are only limited few good publishing houses because otherwise there are lot of publishing houses i think there are more than 1000 publishing houses in this country if you collate the even the, the regional languages out there even i was amazed when i did my research before i started up my publishing house i think what needs to bring in is to create that bigger readership look at uk in comparison to geographically in comparison to our country we are this big but the readership is quite bigger way bigger in 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 western world versus out here if there is a demand of course lot many players will come into picture and the market will be established so i think if we focus more on that we have shows on chefs on gadgets movie reviews everything so many television channel 10 sort of awards happening we have more than 60 literature festivals in this country we do not have a single show on books or on writing as a talent hunt on national television anywhere we have got 200 tv channels this is something we need to fix we need to create celebrities role models out of authors we need to make people excited about reading as such that hasn't happened so if the production companies out there are very interested in bringing shows around books why not people know which movie is coming out on this friday today they are not aware which book is actually coming out unless and until you are an avid reader we have to make this whole process of reading sexy in today's time to get that foot fall out there there's a lady on the left you had a question ma'am yes if you can get the mic that's the last question that's the last question yes we can answer off offline otherwise thank you uh, just to carry on the um, questioning of mitali about uh, the avashali uh, sorry about uh, editorial um, uh, strategies so how do you make can you hold the mic closer to your oh sorry yes. so uh, again about editorial um, uh, you know acumen how do you balance out between what is commercially viable for instance romance you're talking about it you know it's so so popular you know if there are books that people read it is about romance 
at least in India, and uh, the uh, uh, the your own uh, personal uh, evaluation of a project, which may not follow the trend, you know, but which has value in itself. And how do you go about fixing that? Yeah. I mean, do you give give it up uh, and, and tell the author that, you know, we it's not on our list, you know, the famous line, or how do you go about helping an author? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, let me. Do you need to put the volume? Okay, Fine. sorry. Um, so let me begin by saying that I I am too old to read the books I publish, to be honest. So sometimes I do wonder, what am I doing here? Should I be, you know, moving away? Am I growing? You know, personally, I'm in a different phase in life. I've got two grown-up kids, and I and I keep asking them. I said, do you think that I should be doing this? Do you think I'm doing that? But at the same time, I feel somehow I'm the right person to do that. Because, um, because I'm not the reader, okay? Um, so I have this distance with the book. Uh, and I can evaluate f it for what it is. I can look at it in a way where I think that, um, you know, you can actually imagine your readers when you're reading the book. When you're reading a manuscript, you know where it's going in whose hands. And if that's not happening for you, you're not picking that book up. So it's, it is quite simple. At the same time, it's very tough. I do think about it. I do think um, so. I I read very differently, uh, but uh, but then we all do, right? You have to read out of your genre. You have to read out of uh, your space to know your boundaries. So you do that. You evaluate yourself. And what interestingly I've started doing is that I have started slowly trying to add a list that I believe kind of is a genre bender. And to have that little space and every year to do one or two books in that genre, which I feel strongly about, which kind of works with that, uh, you know, crosses that boundary over from being com completely commercial or doing that, but at the same time giving that kind of writing a space. So, yeah, that's my thing to do. All right. Well, thanks a lot. We'll call Thank the session you. up. Thanks. Thank you so Thank you much. So much.